Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Wonder Series Wednesday. Yep, it's Wednesday again. So we are here to help you to look for look at your life from a different perspective. What could you learn by opening your mind to other ideas and concepts? Who would you become if you welcomed the possibilities and embraced new opportunities? Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Stiegel. I am your host here at the Wonder Series, where we offer you that opportunity to think outside the box and wonder how you can create the life you have always desired, a life on purpose by design rather than by default and circumstances, which we all get stuck in. The Wonder Series is sponsored by Living Healthy List at livinghealthylist.com. Um, our weekly interviews feature world-class experts in various areas of health, wellness, personal development, and bringing some more fun into life, uh, all who inspire you with their insight and their wisdom, and you are in for a treat today. Uh, here we give you tips and proven strategies that you can use right away, because what is the point of listening to somebody and understanding what they're talking about and not putting it into practice. So we are here today to excite, engage, educate, but most importantly, to empower you to become the person you were always intended and to live the healthy, happy, purpose-filled life that you've always been dreaming of. So new episodes of the Wonder Series are released every Wednesday. Oh, I just said that at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, easy for me to say. Uh, and you can find them on Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, our Google Podcasts. And please, if you like what you hear, please go on, subscribe, and give us a five-star rating. And while you're at it, if you really like us, tell your friends about us too. So without further ado, welcome again to the Wonder Series. What begins with wonder can become hmm, wonderful. So today I am really excited. Uh, I always enjoy talking with my friend, Lori Bryant Woolridge. She is so much fun. She's so insightful and always full of incredible uh, information and insight. So Lori is a certified spiritual love coach. She's an author. She's a confidence peddler, angel scribe. She is a spiritualist, girl power advocate, love connoisseur, a sun lover, cloud watcher, we've got plenty of those today, and she is the founder of Soul Innovations Coaching. Lori, welcome, welcome to the Wonder Series. It's great to see you again. Thank you. I love being here. You know that with you. I do. It's always fun. It's always, always fun. And of course, we just saw each other a couple of days ago, so it's even more fun that we get, uh, I get to see you a couple of days, like three days in a row, uh, three days later. So let's talk about relationships. So in April, one of the things that we were taught we want to talk about is resilient relationships and all types of relationships. You know, most of the time when people think of relationships, they think of the people that are around them. But relationships are, are, are go deeper than that. So I would like for us to talk about, you know, relationships, one, beginning with one of the people in the relationship, uh, say me or you or that other person, and then really how we can create those relationships that we are really dreaming of. Yeah. So I think the first thing that we have to realize is that self, which is, I think, that other person you were referring to um, is one of the least, not the least, um, one of the top two least associated words with relationships. Mm. We really do not think of relationship with self as a real relationship. And, you know, in the 15 years that I've been coaching mostly women on love and relationships, one of the things that um, the goal is always to create that fulfilling, healthy, uh, loving relationship with yourself, because that is the keystone. That's, that is the foundation that holds up every other relationship in your life, whether it be romantic or familial or you know friends or whatever. So I think it's really important as we talk about relationships, first and foremost, is that recognition that the one with ourselves is the most important. It's the most telling. 
and telling in the sense it's going to be the best indicator of how successful your other relationships are gonna be. So that's, uh, that's kind of one of those baseline truths that we have to kind of set uh, in the beginning here. That makes a lot of sense. I remember I had a, a conversation with a friend a handful of years ago, and she was really disappointed in the relationships that she has had in her life. Um, you know, relationship with her husband wasn't going well. She wasn't having great relationships with her kids. She and her mom are always at odds. And she had some friends who she thought were friends, but weren't friends. And they were kind of in and out. And she, I know I, I've known her for a long time. So I, I kind of called her on it and I asked her the question, okay, so what's the common denominator here? Yeah. And to be honest, at first, she had no idea what I was talking about. Well, what do you mean? You know, every one of the, conver you know, even every one of the relationships is different. I said, yes, they are. But what's the common denominator? And she did not want to look yeah. inside and say, huh, me. Eventually, yeah. I got it out of her. Yeah, but it's true, right? Relation, we go into relationships thinking about the other person. We go into love thinking about the kind of love we're going to receive, not the kind of love that we give. So it's one of those things that, um, like love, people do not understand relationships and their true purpose in our growth and evolution as a soul being. And so if you haven't heard me talk before, you must know that um, my um, emphasis is always on your soul knowing who you are as a soul and really integrating that mind, body, soul thing. So um, I'm gonna throw some, you know, swami salami woo woo at you. <laughs> but we'll make it, we'll make it relatable so that you understand because the more you can understand yourself at that soul level, the more the rest of your this human experience begins to make. So definitely as a piggybacking on what you were just saying about your friend, what are relation, what are the purposes, what is, is the purpose of our relationship? And what would you say, Denise, based on what you've heard or what you think, what do you think the purpose of a relationship is? I always think a purpose, there's, there's, I kind of believe in the reason, season, lifetime type of thing. So I think relationships come and go for a reason. So what is that reason? Um, I think they're just different, but in, in general, what is, what is the, a, a, the point of a relationship? I guess it, it's to learn about yourself, about connection. Absolutely. You're, you're so evolved. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's think about this. So let's break it down to this many, many relationship lesson right now. So first of all, all your relationships are with soulmates. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that that soulmate relationship is that one and only for the rest of my life, there's love in my life, that one person that's out there that's waiting for me. And that is a lovely thought because it gives us hope if we don't have the relationship. It gives us, you know, kind of this giddiness about love that we love. But it also gives love that idea that's very rare and it's something we have to search for. Mm -hmm. The truth is we're all soulmates. We all travel in a lifetime with groups of souls through life, through different lifetimes. So those are your soulmates, your buddies, your people that you connect with. And the purpose of every soulmate is to help the other learn. Learn the lessons needed for them to evolve and grow. Mm -hmm. And so your soulmates can be your mom, your dad, your sister, your you know, lover, it can also be your frenemy. Mm -hmm. It could be that person that just rocks your world in all the wrong ways. And yes, it can be that great love. It depends on the lesson you're there to learn. Mm -hmm. So that every relationship then becomes a laboratory. Every single relationship you are in becomes a laboratory, a mm -hmm. classroom of sorts where you are both teacher and student. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's your job in that classroom, in that soulmate relationship to be the teacher 
Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is your role to be the student. Mm -hmm. The lessons that are most powerful, the most important for you at that moment, are the ones that impact you the greatest. So that's why if you are in a relationship and your lesson is about learning to be, to receive, mm -hmm. right? To receive love, to be open to love so that you can be vulnerable and intimate and stuff. It, it, the, the universe is going to create that. You're going to run into that person that's going to force you to look at those issues. Mm -hmm. And without recognizing that, we can get caught up in the idea that this is just why they're always this. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So we put everything about why is this being done to me? To me. Why, why am I? Uh, why can't I find the person that's going to blah blah blah? As opposed to, ooh, every relationship I'm in, I have this problem. I'm hearing the same thing in different ways. I'm, I'm hearing the same. Um, complaints or I'm complaining about the same thing mm -hmm. and it's always because I'm not with the right person versus oh True. this must be the lesson I am here to learn in this relationship and then doing the work towards that and sometimes you have to learn that lesson over and over and over and I guess the, 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 the challenge I guess it isn't learning that lesson over and over and over it's you're not learning the lesson over and over and over and hopefully eventually we do get to a place where we do learn whatever that lesson is um and that's that 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 really could that's it's hard because I mean I think back you know when I was younger and you know you, you mentioned a minute ago about you know learning to receive man that was hard for me I was a giver I'm still a giver. Like I give, I give, I give, I give, I give. And I hate to say almost to a fault, but probably where, you know, I'm giving all the time and not really to expect something back. It's just who I am. But at some point I kind of did think I should get something back. Yeah. And, you know, and I think, again, that's where the rela see, relationships force us to see ourselves. That's the other thing that we should know about relationships. They are mirrors reflecting back who we are. So your relationships tell you everything about the way you think, the way you judge, the way you, what you believe, um, what bothers you, all those things mirror back to you. But again, because we are not in relationship with self, mm -hmm. we're always trying to work on the relationship with the other person. And the other person is, they're there to learn and, and, and teach as well. And so we're constantly kind of butting heads without knowing what's going on. So if you're a receiver, if you're, a, I mean, a giver, 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 um, at some point you have felt like, well, why aren't I getting back as much as I do? Mm -hmm. And we like to believe that the we're just a giver. We're just love and we're just a giver. But when we do the work, we recognize that it's because we are trying to prove our worth. We are trying to prove our, we're giving beyond um, because we are not feeling ourselves. We're not in a relationship with ourselves where we are able to set boundaries, not to keep people out, but to, to keep our self-respect and our, you know, what we want and alive and well and in the forefront. So um, everything, if you think about your relationships as a selfness lesson, a lesson in who you are, um, you will begin and to judge not the person and their actions, but you and your reactions. Mm. You see, we, tr we try so hard to change people. If they would just change the way they said that, did that, you know, acted, then I would be happy and then everything would be all right. Mm -hmm. right and the person's job in you whatever relationship you are in their job is just to be themselves mm -hmm. because we're all on our own individual path and our job is to look at the way we react to situations and say what is this saying about me mm -hmm. how do I change how do I evolve and and sometimes that that brings up some uncomfortable ideas about ourselves, but it also sometimes brings up a lot of uncomfortable feelings about the relationship. And then that, that can be a scary thing too. I think when you're younger too, at least this is what, what I've experienced in my life. 
<clears throat> and I'm still pretty darn young. But when I was younger, I would agree. I didn't really know what it was that I really wanted. You know, who, you know, who was I and what did I want? Um, and I think that was an interesting kind of transition for me because it made me really step back and kind of step back from a relationship and not look at the relationship because it was a good relationship. You know, it ended and, you know, they never really end great, do they? Um, I beg to differ, but go on. Okay, we could talk about that. But then I really kind of stepped back and thought about who I was. Like, you know, I was working and I was doing all these things and, you know, doing all the things I was supposed to do and all that, but really never thought about me and what it was that I wanted. You know, I obviously wanted to do well in my career and all of that stuff, but that's really all I would think about is, you know, how do I get to this next level? You know, what do I do in this career? And it was all about that kind of stuff. And it wasn't really, it was really surface stuff. It really wasn't kind of digging deep in. And it was interesting because no one that I knew did that kind of internal work. Everything was kind of on the surface. You know, my, you know, my parents always told me, you know, do this, do good, be a good girl, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I followed along with that. Um, but when it came to, as I got older and it came to being in a relationship, again, it was, you know, do the right thing, be a good girl, do the things you're supposed to do, do the things that are expected, expected of you. And I thought about it one day, like, why are these things expected of me? And I think for me, that's when things changed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you make a really good point, right? Especially as we get younger, it's like, um, and one of the things we deal with as coaches all the time is that question. I don't know who I am. I have been everything to everyone except for me, which goes back to that whole idea of being in a relationship. And it goes back to the idea of self-love. Um, but the thing about it is when we are forming relationships with other people and falling in love and being in love with other people, we don't fall in love with people we do not know. Right? True. Um, um, or at least we know enough about them that we have those feelings. So you can't fall in love with who you don't know, including yourself. You can like mm -hmm. them, you can under, kind of try to understand them, but um, because we don't know ourselves, then we can't know what we want mm -hmm. because what you want, what you desire is so really tied to purpose and mission and soul knowing. And until you know that, you're just taking everybody's presented choices and you feel like you're making a choice, but it's always on somebody else's tray here, A, B, yeah. C, and D. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so I know enough about myself that I like this about or whatever that I can pick A, but it's never a right form fitting choice. It's mm -hmm. the best of what I have to choose from. Mm -hmm. And we we do um, operate like that in relationships. And the other thing that we do is because we don't know who we want and then we don't I mean who we are and then we don't know what we want. We look at to love and relationships for those people to show us who we are mm. show us what's worthy and valuable and deserving and lovable and amazing about me so i can see it too so you're always looking at yourself through somebody else's eyes but in a way that's really not helpful in a way that's constantly adding validation because if the way they see you changes for whatever reason mm -hmm. and all of a sudden mm -hmm. well you but you said that I, you loved me because I was boom 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 mm -hmm. so it's such a you know connected yep. and sometimes in the beginning of a relationship you know yeah there is that you know all like you know and I mean I've been married for 19 years so <laughs> I've gone back a couple of years, right. you know, about those, those relationships in the past when, you know, yeah, you, you know, you really fall in love with somebody for whatever, you know, crazy thing that, you know, th that they have in their personality, but then that just gets draining. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. It's because you're looking for something like for your, your, you're searching for that validation and it's exciting, but if it doesn't quite fit who you are, then yeah, after a while it does get draining. Yeah. And you know, when I do a lot of work with women trying to do to find those, their relationships, one of the things we have to do is who are you defined as a woman? Right. Mm. And so with the first part, well, even if you're here working with me, because you want to be in a relationship, who are you as a woman? And so that's the first question we have to like figure out is defining yourself. But then the next thing you have to look at, and if you look at your relationship history, who are you as a partner? Because so often I call it personality shifting. We, we take our values, our core values, we take things that about us that we might love and quirky things, but we do that tap dance and that morphing into what we think they want. And it begins on the dating circuit. You know, what we wear, how we, you know, mm-hmm. how we um, comport ourselves, all that kind of stuff. So how much personality shifting are you doing? And so a lot of times, once we've been in a relationship for a while, we feel like the relationship is failing. It's not being, it's not, doesn't feel um, rewarding. It feels like work is, and, you know, then we buy into the thing that, you know, relationships are all work, not as much as we think that they are, but it's work to keep up with someone that you're not it's work to stay enthusiastic about stuff you don't really care about anymore mm-hmm. it's work to um, be someone who you are not and that's why we feel like a failure in relationships in our lives and it's always about failing you cannot fail at being yourself you can only fail at being something that you're not and so again, we get to the point in relationships where it's like, I'm not happy anymore. I'm just not this, I'm not that. And a lot of times, if you look back, why? It's not that person, the other person. It's not because he or she did or didn't do this, won't, will or won't do this. It's about because I'm not fulfilled. I'm not being me. I'm not doing what I need to do because of who I am and want to do. Um, but we can't see that because we're never looking at ourselves in that that kind of way. It's that's so true. And you know, when you're married and you have a family or don't have a family, you know, I've got me and Mark. We're we're the family. Um, there there are expectations at that point. Um, and I think for a lot of people, that's when the relationship piece gets hard, where there are these other people that you're responsible for. Um, husband, spouse, kids, whatever, you know, whomever is, you know, you consider your family. And I think that's really hard. And especially for women, obviously you and I speak to a lot of women um, to really kind of look at what, where they are in a situation and step back and really kind of look at who they are and what they want and need, because it is always about at that point, it is about what the kids need or what the house needs or all of those things. So how do you, how does one deal with that, the the responsibility and all of those things that kind of come with a marriage, a relationship, a family, and still stay true to who they are and what they need? Yeah, and I think that's the key to all of this is always recognizing who am I at any given moment? Who am I? Uh, Am I being authentically myself? And, and so, you know, I have two kids that are grown now. And when my son, my firstborn was nine months old, I created a group, an organization called Mothers Off Duty. And it was because every Saturday, the husbands would be out playing basketball and having a great time <laughs> and would be gone all Saturday doing them, refreshing themselves from a week of, you know, whatever. And we were sitting around with some friends. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. So we chose the second Saturday of every month. And we were mothers off duty. And 30 years later, we are still, we look back and say how important that was. Marking at that time, because mothers off duty, you could not talk about children. 
You could not talk about spouses. We were here to focus on the me and mommy. We were here to focus on who you were now and who did you want to become and keeping us each other supported and in, a, in alignment with who we're trying to be. So do you have to have a group? No, it helps <laughs> because it's that support. But the recognition that there is self, the selfness that comes in your personal growth and evolution is the key to your relationship with self and everybody else. And there is a difference between selfishness and having a sense of selfness. And so you have to be con committed to putting yourself on the list of people you take care of that still allows you to stay in touch with who you are and who you're becoming in a way that it is based on who you want to be. Not because you're becoming a tired, angry, <laughs> as I call a wow woman, a, warm out, a worn out woman. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you're looking for, right? Uh, and, and it's very easy to do that in the idea of being a good mother, a good wife, good daughter or son or whatever. But again, it goes back. That's why it's self-love, self-care, the relationship with self is the foundation. Because if you put yourself on the list of people you take care of, if you keep your own um, needs for growth and self-care in mind, you, you stop well, you you don't wake up one day and say, oh my God, where did my life go? I suck. I don't know who I am. Now the kids are gone. Now it's midlife crisis time. And, and I do not believe in midlife life crisis. Midlife crisis occurs when you have not listened to the whispers of your soul or the, or the shouts that they come or finally the screams. Midlife crisis comes when you are up against the wall and no place else to go. And now you're in crisis. So part of, again, understand that there are responsibilities to others, but the responsibility you have to yourself, your own growth and self-love and relationship with self is just as important. Compromise has to be made. I mean, you can't, right? However, there are times where you can carve out, no matter what time is reasonable and everybody's schedule is gonna be different. But it, it, and you train people to understand this is my time. This is me time. And so the second Saturday of every month, I don't care what you and the kids do. I'm not getting a babysitter. That's on you. You do what you need to do. But I'm gone from this from morning <laughs> until night. And, and everybody learns to make do. You train people how to treat you. But you got to train yourself how to treat yourself first. I think you you mentioned you, meant, you mentioned the word compromise, and that's one of the things that I think my husband and I do really well in our relationship. We have this thing that, and I'm going to talk about this on our um, meaningful conversation um, next week. Is it's something called 202060, and essentially what it is: 20% of the time he gets what he wants the way he wants it; 20% of the time I get what I want, what I need, whatever that is, exactly the way I want it and need it. 60% of the time, it's just kind of life in general. And what I really appreciate about this concept that we've kind of created, okay, he created, um, is that that 20% of the time, you, I do get what I need, whether it's going to visit my family, just me, whether it's, you know, going to, um, in November, I always go to a weekend retreat that uh, Luann Beekler does um, here in Minnesota. You know, these are the things, and he can't complain about it. He can't complain that I'm going to go visit with my mom or, you know, take the two days. Um, and on the flip side, when he needs his time, whatever that means, then I'm there to support that too. And I think sometimes in a when you're in that relationship, one, you forget what you need and want. Um, but also when you're in a relationship, it is important to remember, to know, understand what the other person wants and needs too. Yeah. And to kind of compromise in, and it's what I mean with compromise, it's just timing and, you know, kind of, like you said, you know, changing schedules and just listening 
to what the other person wants or needs. Um, Because I think a lot of times, especially, well, I I find this with me and Mark, it's usually pretty close. It's probably, it's usually in alignment. It's not like all of this craziness where, you know, you know, people, you see these you hear people say, oh, my relationship's so horrible. My husband's like this and my wife is like this and blah, blah, blah. Because I think what's happening is people, one, are not taking their time for themselves, but they're also not paying attention to what yeah. really is going on around them. And you know what? If I can, all, I always will bring things back around to the foundation of the core is that relationship with yourself. When you are self-actualized, self-defined, self-actualized, and you know what makes your soul sing, you know what, um, and you're really content in who you are and recognizing that you are a flossom individual. Mm. A flossom meaning that most of you is a masterpiece. And the other parts, what we will call our flaws, Mm. are our growth pockets. So if we did not have those, we would now have no place to grow and evolve. So we are a masterpiece and simultaneously a work in progress. So when you understand that about yourself and you accept yourself for all your flossomeness, Mm -hmm. you judge yourself less. And in when you judge yourself less, automatically without fail, you judge other people less. You don't try to make other people, you don't need to control other people. You don't need other people's presence and validation and everything else to make you happy, right? I always say, you know, you know you're enough when alone isn't lonely. Mm -hmm. And so the more you are in in tune with your soul self and understand who you are and have that that love of self, that respect of self, that self-esteem, all of that, it automatically transfers to your other relationships. And that's when the relationships aren't as much work as people think it is because there's a natural ebb and flow and natural Mm -hmm. compassion and kindness and natural understanding that because I need the time by myself to recharge and re reinvigorate and check in with me about why I'm feeling a certain way. I understand that you need it too. Mm-hmm. So it always comes back to how much and how well and how completely you love self. So Lori, how does one start? I mean, I've been on this journey I mean, I know I've been on this journey and it's, it's been an incredible journey and I know I'm still learning and growing. Um, and for me, it was a, the end of a relationship and, and, and a lot of upheaval and change that I had created basically because I was searching for, you know, kind of looking for love in all the wrong places, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, I had made a lot of decisions based on somebody else for mm-hmm. somebody else, not myself. And so It's been, you know, so I know why, when and why I started to really look inside and start to do the self-work. And what I started with, truly, what I started with really was just like a gratitude journal. And that, that, that worked for me. And then I started reading. But for our listeners today who are saying, okay, well, that's all great. I need to learn how to love myself, understand myself, figure out who who I am. How does one really today start to find, figure out who they are? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you some ideas to think about, but you can also go to soulcoach.co, S-O-L coach.co. And on the homepage, I have this 28-day self-love challenge. And you can take that challenge one day at a time. It's really usually about three tasks a day, but it leads you through self-love. It leads you through how to, um, why you fear love. It leads you to how to love yourself while you're loving other people. And so it kind of looks at all kinds of different ways in different formats of relationships, all based on the way you love yourself. That's right on the front page. 28 days 
Um, there's a lot of good info in there, so you can do that. But the first thing you have to recognize is what relationships are meant for, which is not to validate who we are and our lovability and, and the fact that we are, um, because we have someone, especially romantic relationships, and therefore we are complete. Mm -hmm. Relationships are our learning classrooms, our learning laboratories to help us know ourselves and to grow ourselves. So that's what you really have to recognize. That's what the purpose is. You've got to love and nurture yourself from within before you can expect the kind of love that you've been looking for on the outside. And that's with your mother, with your father, with your friends, with your lovers. It doesn't matter. If the relationship and love of self is not intact, no relationship will ever feel complete or solid or, you know, um, real, mm -hmm. because it fills, that validation fills you up with smoke and the smoke dissipates and now you're searching for it again. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to know that. You also have to know why you're in the relationship you're in. So what do you want from it? It's important for you to know what you want from it, because if you don't know those answers, Maybe that's why you're questioning your relationships. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of people will apply this to romantic relationships, but it's any relationship. What do you want from your relationship with your mom? Mm -hmm. Right? And um, so knowing why you're in that relationship is important because if, if you know why you're in a relationship and you're seeing something different, then you're recognizing that, oh, this isn't the relationship for me because this is what I want, or what I want is really not sustainable because I'm looking for something outside of me right. that I, I can't feel. And also settling for relationships that you don't want because out of fear and being lonely or not having someone, you know, your emotions will tell you when I'm feeling restless, when I'm feeling that this is it. And it doesn't necessarily always mean that the relationship is done and over and complete, but it does mean that you are, if it's consistent feelings, you need to check in. Why am I feeling that way? Mm -hmm. Don't judge yourself or the relationship. What's the, what are they indicating? So uh, the best thing is whenever you're uncertain about a relationship is to connect with your heart center mm -hmm. and the emotions that are tied to that. So you'll know, always know the truth by the way it feels. Um, but the big thing, the biggest thing is that you are not responsible for your partner's actions or reactions. Your parents' actions or your actions, your daughter's actions or actions, only your own. So how you react to that, their actions will tell you everything you know, you need to know about the gaps in your own. And that's really important because we are always constantly trying to judge the health of our relationships and the happiness quotient in our relationships based on other people's, how other people make us feel. Mm -hmm. And it's those, true. Mm -hmm. those actions, what they do or don't do, you know, dictates how I feel. Yeah. Their job is only to be who they are. Your job is to monitor your reactions to them being who they are and their, what they do and to figure out where my gap is. Am I expecting them to be this and that because I don't have this and that? Work on those gaps. Sometimes the relationship will be complete because the lesson is over. And the beautiful thing about it is you'd never have to fear that there is another, not another love coming. We get, we have this misnomer that love is so rare and looking for that soulmate and it's, and it's, you know, finite and maybe I'm a lucky one, maybe I'm not. Love is everywhere. Love is always available. You just have to have the vision to recognize it. And the more you recognize the love that you are, the more you will have these relationships that teach you these lessons and then evolve you to the next relationship it's more complete, more and longer and happier for a longer time, maybe the rest of your life, or maybe until that lesson is complete. 
and you will evolve. And that soulmate love that does exist and that you want, that is the great love in celebrating love of self with someone other. That's the lesson in that. That it is just not need you to complete me, not need this love to know, let me know my worth, but just to celebrate the love I am with you. Of everything we've we've talked about, Lori, that's the that's the piece that's going to stay with me the longest. All these other relationships can become it's like it's like you don't take algebra without learning your you know addition and subtraction. So every relationship, if you look into them as ways I'm going to grow, it leads you to that love always does. I promise you it always was because you can only attract the same. So you got to be worried about the quality of love you give so that you can attract that same quality. And that starts with self. So start here. Always. Always. Wonderful. Lori, thank you so much. Having a conversation with you is so much fun. We can just chat forever, um, but we do need to uh, wrap this session of the Wonder Series up. And uh, I know we'll have many more of these conversations in the days to come, days and years to come. So thank you everyone for listening in to the Wonder Series. Again, we're here every Wednesday at th uh, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can get more information about the Wonder Series and more information about Living Healthy List at livinghealthylist.com. Uh, if you're interested in joining us as an expert guest here on the Wonder Series, give me an email. Shoot me an email at support at livinghealthylist.com. would love to chat. In closing, I would just like to remind everyone when it comes to wonder, when it comes to the wonder series, what begins with wonder can truly become something special, something unique and something wonderful. So we will see you next Wednesday. Uh, till then, healthy living, happy life, everyone. Thank you.